Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. Going to be looking at a very interesting Marvel comic here today, Ed. Peter Bagg's Megalomaniacal <laughs> Spider-Man. But first, tell us about Red Room. Peter Bagg, one of the great uh, Fantagraphics comic creators with this comic hate. Yes, continuing the uh, the Fantagraphics comic book tradition. <laughs> yes, sir. Red, Red Room, <laughs> coming out in uh, May 2021. Uh, murder on the dark web for fun and profit, Jimmy. Uh, you could start to pre-order these comics uh, today. Um, a lot of people have done so. Thousands of people have done so. I have a link tree in the description below. Take you to the Fantagraphics website, and you could uh, pre-order order the comics. Have them delivered to your doorstep. Uh, the retailers out there who uh, buy five copies of the comic are going to be able to get the Eddie P variant. Uh, cover for for their shop. It's so much fun. Yeah. It, it, it's very uh, in a way Peter Bag esh. You know, stretching, of, stretching those uh, stretching those features out. A lot of curves, a lot of stretching, <laughs> a lot of bendiness. Let's talk uh, Klaus. You know, let's keep the Fantagraphics energy going on. Uh, Kayfabe co-host with the most uh, Jim Rugg did this variant cover that will be unlocked when a store orders a dozen copies. They could purchase you know the Jim Rugg variant cover that's. In homage to Dan Clow's eight ball issue number one. We're historians, Ed. It's true. <laughs> and journalists. Yes. Peach Momoko, uh, Cottage Industry Unto Herself. Uh, it's done variant covers ranging from, I don't know, Power Rangers to uh, maybe Batman. I don't know. <laughs> she did a Red Room cover. Uh, she's exclusive to That's Marvel the one these that days. Yeah, she's, she's exclusive to Marvel these days, man. So, so uh, this might be one of like her last variants outside of of that system and cool stores that uh that invest heavily in uh red room they get special treatment man and third eye comics in maryland ordered a thousand copies uh we drew them a fresh cover and at their website they have weird bundles uh where they have all of the uh variants ganged up together man if you order a thousand copies that's a lot of jim rug covers you're going to be able to get that's a lot of Peach Momoko's covers you're going to be able to get. I think they blasted through 75 Peach, peach cover bundles and stuff right now. They're going to have to re-up. I think so. Hey, I get hit up with people asking how to get my variant, so I'm happy to point them at, at Third Eye Comics as, uh, as at least a starting point. And, and if it's, stores out there have these variants, let, let us know. know, man. Yep, yep. You can follow me on patreon.com slash jimrug, where I post lots of my process and original art and my out-of-print zines and mini-comics. The latest one to go up is this catalog from my uh, I Am 8-Bit ballpoint pen show. Uh, we made a very limited print run of this thing for the show as a catalog. That went out of print pretty quickly, and now it's available on my Patreon. If you missed it the first time, if you want to see this kind of work, uh, you can get the on patreon.com slash jimrug, along with a lot of my other process, making of posts, uh, comparison things of that nature. But Ed, the subject at hand today, hates Peter Bagg, shows up at Marvel in the early 21st century to bring his sensibility to Spider-Man. Jimmy, I'm, I'm on record uh, saying it. I think there was like a, a Palmer's Picks that was focused on, on humor uh, in one of the Old Wizard episodes. I think I'm on record saying that Pete Bag is like one of the cartoonists, uh, one of the rare cartoonists who actually gets me to 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 laugh. Uh, I'm going to take that a step further and say that I think he is the funniest cartoonist in terms of speaking to my exact sense of humor. I fucking laughed a million times reading this thing <laughs> because the, his his level of like snark speaks to me in all of the right ways. Even this front cover, he's pushing boundaries because I think he, this is suicide. <laughs> I think this shit was added by some bullpenners or something, you know, to like, <laughs> let's make him look like he's drunk because there's even liquid right there. Yes. And that ain't water. <laughs> there's a gun right by his head and hand. I'm telling you, right man, in the middle of the page. These lines who have these like little drunk bubbles are thinner than every other line. I think it was just some hack in the office. His man had to like, you know, hit some white out and like, we got to make this look like he's drunk. The cool thing about this is that he's dismantling Spider-Man every step of the way. And along so doing, he's dismantling 
all power fantasy fucking losers, Wednesday warrior types. He's just throwing bombs. Boom, boom, boom. Talking about like, uh, you know, we should yeah, start yeah, yeah. cracking we'll, open. We'll go through it piece by piece. Great cover. Um, I believe that there was a little bit of interest, or or at least he asked Dan Klaus if he wanted to draw this comic whenever this thing all came together. I think that's. I think Klaus mentions that in his comics journal, one of his comics journal interviews, um, and it just highlights the unlikeliness of Pete Pete Bag doing a, an official Marvel Spider Man comic. This is hell freezing over kind of days. It was. Shocking! It was huge to me, man. Uh, he he was, you know, this is the first one. So so, uh, and it's actual Alonzo who's the editor. He was my editor on X Men Grand Design, and in conversation, he's like, "Dude, Pettybone, Pettybone is and um, uh, Dan Klaus are like my favorite artists." And and I would just be like, "Well, can't you just bring any of that energy like to to your fucking titles, man?" This was such a, a, a wild time. Uh, this is Bill Jemis, Joe Quesada era. Like they take over Marvel, start to turn things around and poach Axel Alonso from Vertigo. I remember that being a newsworthy item first time at the I, time. First time I saw Axel's name is uh, editor of Preacher. But they did all kinds of stuff with talent. Uh, you know, talent that hadn't worked with Marvel, talent that we you would think of as not Marvel style. Uh, they were really open those first couple of years of, of bringing some different, some different looks and different people to Marvel Comics to see what they did. And... Uh, <laughs> Haven't stayed in that direction, but uh, it, it was a really kind of crazy, cool period at, in the beginning. And so we start with Gwen Stacy, and the first thing that happens here is, uh, you know, you talk about Bag dismantling this mythos. The very first piece, Uncle Ben. Yeah. Yeah, he was, uh, what was he? He was uh, doing some, like, bad dealings or something. And and this part is, takes place in 1968. Yes. Yeah, what if? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that that's somebody covering their their backside, I think. But uh, tells the story about you know he thought he was gunned down by a burglar, and it turns out he was a degenerate, chronic gambler who was planning to shoot the muscle that was coming to collect on his debt. Completely shatters the entire Spider-Man mythos right here by you know two panels into page two. Aunt May was lying to me, <laughs> and then he just balls up and is just like whimpering little putts on the ground dude the characters are always acting always moving uh the beauty is in the writing like the voice that he's able to pete bags able to conjure up for all of the characters uh gwen did i ever tell you about my poor uh, uncle ben <laughs> yes many times <laughs> like like now that i i mean i i slept at pete bags house i slept on his couch i know what his voice sounds like and i can't not hear Peter, Peter Bag saying these words, man. That's and so funny. And it adds funny. to the level to me, man. It's such a perfect fit in a way. You know, the Peter Parker character with, like, the young hip characters that he would write in, in hate. It's such a perfect fit of, like, cartoonist and a Marvel character. Uh, the fact that it's this, you know, the holiest of all Marvel characters, all the better. So let's dismantle fucking Steve Ditko. <laughs> oh, boy. Right? Like, let's dism let's take it to that level, man. With this panel right there, I think it's high time you stop viewing the world as such juvenile black and white terms. That's that's also a shot to every Wednesday warrior who's, like, yes. uh, you know, uh, looking for, you know, something clean and tidy. Yeah, wow. And, uh, and we get down here, and, and Gwen's trying to build him back up and saying, you know, live for yourself for a change, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> and life is what you make of it. And boy, does that set the trajectory for uh, for this this issue of Spider-Man. <laughs> Imagine if this was like Amazing Spider-Man 457 or whatever number they were on. It would be, it would be incredible. <laughs> you would have people burning the Marvel offices to the ground. It, I mean, that's like, you know, the like when Captain America turns heel for part one of six and people start to go crazy, man, like without letting the story play out. It's It's that kind of energy. <laughs> and and like this whole bit man it's just total like you know it's like it's like right wing you know you know he's like he's like uh 1968 alex p keaton like Reg reagan youth kind of kind of character you're you're feminine wiles blah blah, blah. you're like those <laughs> radical protester types that hang out on campus yeah he's he's such a maniac you might be working for mysterio or dr <laughs> octopus yeah, He's and Gwen with, is just like, what are you talking about? I mean, he has lost your mind. He is without a doubt the most mentally disturbed person I ever met. 
Yet, he's also cute as the Dickens. It's so funny. It's such a it's such a uh, funny kid comic, you know, of, of like young people behaving outrageously. It's it's uh. He gets. You know what's great? He gets a chance to do something like this, and he goes for it. Totally. You know, like like, like this is so balls to the wall. Every there's not one misused panel in this comic. No fear of like, oh, they're not going to invite me back. For sure. Like, like you get no sense of chilling effect. Even, like, the compromise that I think that had to be made, and I didn't speak to him about this, is just that cover piece where it's like, that's clearly a fucking post-suicide <laughs> Spider-Man. But... Yeah, color that white, not red on yeah. under his mask. And had them little bubble <laughs> gimmicks, man. Yeah, that's... It's kind of shocking. I love it. You know, the amazingly convoluted, emotionally overwrought adventures. His lettering is dope. I really like his cartooning. I, I feel like people don't talk about his art as much as they should because his writing is so celebrated. But that kind of stylization, like, it's a, it's exceptional. Nobody is this stylized with that kind of figures and abstracting of the figure. And I always think it works, and it's incredible to see it applied to superheroes because we're used to seeing it applied to slackers and, and musicians and punks. It works equally perfect with cartoons, yeah, you I know, agree. with superhero cartoons. I agree. And that page, man, that's the page that... Uh, let me draw all, all my favorite uh, Spider-Man villains. Yeah, absolutely. Like day after day after you day. You could have one of these pages, man. This is the one to be. Um, colored by Laura Allred. She does a other, good job. The other credit. Because she goes the self-shaded route. Kind yeah. of animation style. Yeah, and bright. It's it's exactly what you want. And you're right, I, I love the lettering too. It's it's one of the great letterers, man. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> that head. Makes you think amazing. of that Herb Trippy, right? It from, does. From, from it that does. Uh, Marvel team up uh annual. And this is them doing their dance. Hey, that hurt. Well you were supposed to duck. <laughs> what do you say, man? Sa same same time tomorrow? Go yeah. find a new playmate. Or better yet, go get yourself a girlfriend. Get a life. That's Peter Bag talking to the readers of this shit. <laughs> Do you remember how this was received when it came out? Like nothing. Yeah, that's 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 my memory too. It was a big deal that it, this was happening, and then it it. I don't remember much talk around it. I see. I don't know that it was a big deal. Like maybe not. It was a big deal because I was you know like I, this is when I had a subscription of the Comics Journal. Uh, you know, so it was a big deal in, in one little corner of the comics world. I, I guess I, I saw it on the uh, on the shelf, and that was the first time I you know I oh, saw wow. this. Yes, exactly. We 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 see the famous Ditko, uh, you know, his Bible or whatever. Uh, fun. You know, it's him, it's Parker internalizing these lessons now. And like, what does that look like if the hero really was going to adopt this? I mean, it, it's... With, with a little bit of a twist, <laughs> a little bit of a twisted uh, bent on it. Yeah, like it's like everything that, you know, Pete Bag like knew about the legend of Steve Ditko. He's, he's going to play around with the Aunt May Kimmy was so great. Man, she's watching Red Skelton. <laughs> Such a nice man. Like, I think I could just... Imagine Pete Bag cracking himself up while writing She's knitting. This shit. It's yeah. so funny. <laughs> the little details are great. But what's the application look like? Cut to 1984. Here we are in the 80s. Yuppie and, culture. Uh, exactly. Gordon you, Gecko. You mentioned he's, Alex P. Keaton. <laughs> yes. He's standing right there, man, saying, uh, one day all of this could be yours. And, and, and poor people eat salads. <laughs> I think they do call uh, iceberg lettuce white trash lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like this is Peter Bag giving you the true nerd homunculus power fantasy like the true life one man it's not fighting the vulture he's a twerp he's a peckerwood he's a lame and he's gonna make everybody who's ever slighted him in the slightest way he's gonna make them pay man nerd rage yeah, like this is this is, but this is the true male. This is a true male power fantasy for the the weaklings out there. It's not about virtuosity and, and doing good. They become cunts basically when they have the opportunity. Yeah, there's no uh, no responsibility grafted onto his power right. in this fantasy, and he's taken over the Daily Bugle. And uh, now Jameson is his stooge. Yeah, <laughs> because and, and it has to do with corporate buyouts and stuff and like letting uh, there's like a, a very little complex piece in here about about the hostile takeover. Once uh, Jameson took the 
the Bugle public. Yes. And and uh, P- Peter Parker was able to to buy enough shares to make all the decisions. That feels like it goes back to uh, some of Bag's comics and ideology in some of those comics, right? The the uh, not trusting the corporate, you know, the powers that be. Uh, a chance to put those front and center in a Marvel comic. <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing. And you know what? It's here's the thing too, that's divorced from like the people like from Marvel DC trying to put their like little messages into their shit. This is funny. This is entertaining. Good point. Good point. You know, so if he's putting his his gimmicks in there, man, it still reads as like a good comic. Reagan has much to answer for. His his uh, editorial, Peter Parker's taking him to task for it. <laughs> I like that president. And and you know what? This this rings with the uh, Pittsburgh Post Gazette in in a lot of ways where it's like, uh, you know, we back the president one hundred percent, but we have to allow opposing voices. Where it's like, you're backing this person one hundred percent for economic reasons because everybody around you wants wants that to be, but you really feel this other way. Oh man, it's so impressive. That nine panel grid too allows Bag to really tell a lot of story in this issue as well. And that's Steve Ditko format. It is. You know, like he's he's using, this is, I'm sure the last fucking Spider-Man comics that Peter Bag ever read were done by either Ditko or John Romita. <laughs> You know what I'm saying, man. So this is what this is a Spider-Man come on. He's not format. a big. He's not a big McFarlane mark. <laughs> yeah, when he was the editor at uh, Weirdo Magazine at the time. <laughs> oh man, this, this is also. Uh, you see how she's like poor hippie chick, like commune girl, like UNICEF, all of that. That's the story of uh, Steve Jobs and and his his old lady, like the lady that like, made Lisa, the, oh, the, I didn't the know daughter, that. like. Like, he settled all kinds of weird stuff with her and, like, gave her, like, um, like child support, like, just before they went public so that contracts were signed so that she couldn't sue him for pieces wow. of, for, like, because it's a percentage thing. Yeah. And he was going to be making exponentially higher percentage, so he just, like, took care of that, gave her bare subsistence. So, th- so like, that's what this is right here. Wow, that's dark. It's a dark comic. The Parker Estate. <laughs> so he needs to make a, uh, a an appearance as Spider Man, a public appearance. And when he puts on the costume, realizes that he's just become this bloated, soft, overweight. Like he's got he the, can't go out like that. He's got the dad bod now. What's he gonna do? And uh, Jameson shows up at the uh, at, at the perfect time, bringing his dry cleaning to him, and the uh, secret is out of the out of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> JJ, he's the editor in chief of the newspaper, and uh, he's like, "Why couldn't we just get like a little twerp to bring these, uh, you know, a little intern?" And and Parker said that the interns have more important things to do. <laughs> just totally like harassing this editor. Yeah. So now we have the unlikely team up. Two two guys that have something in common here, a common goal. How are they going to work this out? Put the costume on Jameson. Yeah, because he's got that uh, withered little body, man. That's very Spider-Man-like at these these days. <laughs> and talk about this is the greatest like dark sequence, man. And also, this is ejaculation. Yes, this is coming all over fucking Pete's face, man. Yeah, because he got a little overexcited. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, totally, man. This is hysterical. <laughs> what they're what they're getting in here, man. Oh man. He's so excited. Yeah. <laughs> Jameson and, and meeting this president. Yeah, he's getting to meet President Reagan and it just so happens to be a shooter up top. But everybody's super stoked because Spider-Man's there to save the day. President hides behind him. <laughs> Turn the page, Jimmy. <laughs> J. Jonah Jameson is fucking dead, which means Spider-Man is dead. <clears throat> wow. Fifteen years later, once again, we do the, the jump forward, and uh, we're off to visit the former uh, Peter Parker, the uh, the former super rich guy, and uh, shades again of Ditko, right? Like, let's go percent. knock on the door and see this mysterious guy who's been hiding out in his apartment. To get, get slammed, you leave, and then, and then, you know, if you're lucky, you gain entry. Like, it, that's always been the thing. Like, his name's in the book. You could go get the white pages. You could find the address. 
uh, you make the trip to New York. You got to make, you got to take the shot. Like when he was alive, you had to take the shot and, you know, get rejected if, if that's the case. But would you want to live uh, your life not taking a chance to, to kick it with Steve Ditko for a couple of minutes? And this dude has gained entry into the Parker estate. And, <laughs> you know, they all have their stories, you know, like some, someone said, like, came to town, uh, you know, years ago and showed us a photo and was like, do you know who this is? I looked at it and was like, fuck yeah, like, that, yeah, that's him. You you, you got access, man. Good, good for you. But there's a part where, like, the guy's like, oh, no, like, is this the is this the speech that I heard about or something? So I guess, like, you know, Ditko had his spiel. And also you could hear Ditko on that Masters of Comic Art Harlan Ellison thing. There's the Ditko chapter, and he opts not to be interviewed and just reads his Randian manifesto. <laughs> manifesto. And it makes no fucking sense. Like, yeah. Uh, you know, not, not far from this kind of thing. And it's drawn to be Steve Ditko. You know, like, that's Ditko. Yeah, what a what an interesting, strange comic. The kind of comic that belongs on uh, the Kayfabe channel. To yeah, be sure. absolutely. You know, kind of surprised that it's taken taken this long to get to this point. But like, Bag really delivers. You know, like he covers so much ground from from some very funny stuff to, uh, you know, giving it to the fans to giving it to the creators. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's remarkable. And I guess a happy ending here, right? The uh, the ending that, that we were all denied due to uh, the, the events, the tragic events of the Amazing Spider-Man. We, we, get, we get to see the, uh, I don't know, I guess the way some of those true fans maybe wanted it to work out. You wanted your happy ending, so enjoy it. And you know, that's Steve Jobs' outfit, like during all of his presentations, man. Black turtleneck, jeans, sensible sneaks. And going to visit an old lady in squalor, tap it one last time, man. <laughs> Gwen Stacy as an old lady. And just like a haggard old broad, too, man. Like, you just had those <laughs> lines, and now she's like withered. Wow. Tip of the pen to Steve Ditko. Pete Bag, 02. <laughs> wow. Love it, man. It's... it's just a shocking comic. It in is. In every way. It's it's one of those things that like makes me wonder about, uh, are we living in the Matrix? <laughs> did something, did we go through some dimension? Like, how is this a thing? This comic, right? Like, you always talk about, you always hear about like, gotta be stewards of the property and shit like that. Man, if this thing, you know, is generating a lot of money, you can't, you can't abuse it. There's a cartoon happening at the time. I was going to say... There's a movie happening. That's part of what is really strange. Um, this is so unlikely at any point in history. But to be the time whenever you're promoting the Spider-Man movie? Yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't add up, Ed. I love it so much, man. Shouts to Axel for making that, that happen. Uh, I, I am 100% sure like, and am living proof that these kind of weird comics uh, would not have happened with, without his stewardship. And shouts to Pete for make for like really taking that ball and running with it. Challenge to the editors out there. You know, you love these other voices or, or different kinds of comics or art or whatever. Find ways to, to give them opportunities, you know, wherever you're at. Because uh, this is about as unlikely as you're going to get. Peter Bag and Marvel. It was unbelievable. It's, it's visionary stuff on the part of an editor. So, uh, you know, take some inspiration, editors and, and publishers out there and Every now and then, go outside the box with something like this. It's he'll, definitely memorable. He'll jump to uh, DC Comics for a while after this man have that comic called Sweatshop, which just destroyed the assembly line process, man. Like, uh, you make it fun of every... It was make fun... Sh sweatshop, make fun of the jobbers. Yeah, yeah. Inventive cartoonist, very entertaining, very fun whenever you get to see him looking at the comics industry. I, I stand by it, uh, the funniest cartoonist to me, making, making comic books, uh, hands down, man. I, I, I laughed every freaking page of this thing. Good to go. All right, Kayfabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell, we'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, what do you have out there? Patreon.com slash Jim Rug, where you can see my version of how I make comics. 
Uh, my out-of-print stuff is available on Patreon as well, so patreon.com slash Jim Rugg. Red Room Issue 1, going to be hitting the streets May 2021. You can pre-order it at Fantagraphics through the website in uh, my link tree in the description below. You can pre-order uh, three issues uh, so far. It's going to be coming out monthly. Get it put on your pull list at your local comic shop. Uh, there are these variants out there that you might be able to get your hands on too if you're wily and cunning enough. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video to keep up with everything we have coming up in 2021. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Jimmy, give him one last set of marching orders, man. We're going to be on our way. Read more comics. <laughs>